modern virtuous circles. Anyone who asks about what drives typical modern accelerations will be mindful of mechanisms of positive feedback for which the American sociologist Robert K. Merton has suggested the term Matthew effect, following a well-known passage in the New Testament. The logic of the self-reinforcing sphere of activity that feeds back upon itself is perfectly and intuitively anticipated in the words of Jesus. Quote, For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have... Even what they have will be taken from them. End quote. Effects such as these give typical instances of modernization the form of the circulus virtuosus, or virtuous circle. Although the modern era is also marked by the emergence of devastating circuli vitiosi, its trajectory as a whole to this point has still formed the nexus of virtuous circles whose cumulative impact amounts to a new perception of time. At this point, six such self-reinforcing circular processes ought to be mentioned, which are reciprocally interwoven in a variety of ways. The fine arts, banking, engineering, the state, scientific research, and law in fact, the fine arts in Europe have exhibited a historic, completely new organisation since the 14th century. What we call the Renaissance was the result of a self-intensification of artistic skill in the workshops of northern Italy, Flanders and Germany that lasted for centuries, until finally, thanks to continuous positive feedback, increased by rivalry and mutual observation, a peak of mastery was achieved in the 16th and 17th centuries that will never be surpassed. One merely has to mention names such as Titian, Caravaggio or Rembrandt to indicate how artistic ability soared into the stratosphere. The virtuosic circle in which art of the modern era, insofar as it was virtuosic, successfully advanced was played out in the studios of humble 14th century masters. However, with the emergence of modern art and the transition to an era of global art, the, world's mar the world market standard of post-virtuosic productions has prevailed. Analogous processes can be observed in the realm of positive feedback loops that is commonly referred to as the economy. Even here, a powerful circulus, circulus virtuosus was set in motion from the 14th and 15th centuries on. This virtuous circle ensured that great fortunes were made, and from humble amounts of starting capital, developed into worldwide ventures through the joining together of credit and talent, the latter term understood in its modern sense. Admittedly, the self-reinforcing dynamic of the economic management of art would have come to a standstill in this part of the world, as it did in classical China, when the latter reached the stage of a developed manufacturing economy, were it not associated with an additional dimension of self-reinforcing processes urging it on. As the 17th century ended, and the 18th century began... We are used to giving roughly approximate names to the sphere, such as engineering, and whoever cannot be bothered to think about such matters can simply say technology. The close alliance of the second with the third virtuous circle, that is, of an interest-driven economy with innovative engineering, leads to the dynamic monstrosity that is still, unfortunately, called, quote-unquote, capitalism. Due to a dullness of mind that has been common since the 19th century, although it should have been called creditism or inventionism all along, if we were concerned with its true name. In 1912, in a statement that sounds harmless, but is in fact ominously unfathomable, Schumpeter 
speaks of this monstrosity that begets itself when he notes that, quote, every process of development creates the prerequisites for the following process of development, end quote. This statement can just as well refer to the following self-reinforcing reinforcing circle, which has been developed by the modern state. Since its laboured beginnings in the age of the wars of religion, the modern administrative social welfare state that is financed with taxes has given rise to a particular kind of Matthew effect by generating new spheres of activity over which it may exercise authority, additional zones to be regulated, and more in-depth mandates for its interventions. Here one should recall Wagner's law, which is also known as the quote-unquote law of increasing state spending, or the quote-unquote law of increasing state activity. Two discoveries, incidentally, that were judged favourably by their author, Adolf Wagner, 1835-1917, the doughty development optimist who held a professorship in Berlin. Wagner, the prototype of the subsequently much maligned quote-unquote academic socialists, Cathedra Socialisten, possess the gift of seeing the autogenic expansion of state activity still entirely within the framework of the fulfilment of communal needs. While today we are rather inclined to regard the complex of statism, fiscalism and interventionism from a sceptical perspective, and increasingly suspected of being the absurd theatre of a large counterproductive institution that serves its own interests. In addition, the self-reinforcing circle of the contemporary cognition industry deserves special mention. These days, every European schoolchild knows that the modern age is an age of research. This has been the case ever since Bacon wrote his Novum Organon, and called upon the goddess of experience to increase humanity's stock of no-nonsense knowledge and verified information. And ever since Leibniz wanted to found academies so that research would find a home of its own, solely devoted to the search for new truths. For the world in which we live, there is really no characteristic feature more pronounced than the fact that we have become a place to which recently attained knowledge may migrate. This has to be expressed in such unfamiliar terms, strange as it may sound, because research in the modern style does not at all mean the idyllic propagation of bits of knowledge to be stored in separate compartments for the delight of contemplative minds. Research signifies, per se, the generation of new knowledge through knowledge. Furthermore, knowledge typical of the modern era which revolves around cognitive circuli virtuosi in order to continuously proliferate, is for the most part practical knowledge. Thus it is truth in search of application. It waits for the next opportunity to insinuate itself into the life of modern populations. We exist in a kind of reality that is characterised by the continual, barely controlled immigration of epistemological and technological aliens and can only hope that our new neighbours in this cognitive environment will eventually prove to be civilizable ones. We now come to the last circulus virtuosus on this list, though it is not the least in terms of its impact. The legal system in its current systematic form. Only in a modern Europe that was agitated which was already caught up in all manner of self-reinforcing games, could the apparently trivial, but in reality quite daring idea arise that humans have inalienable rights by nature. Indeed, that life itself is nothing more than the triumphant validation of rights by their holders. To be sure, from time immemorial human beings have sought protection in local constructions of justice. But only in Europe, in the motherland of the Matthew effect, could a circle develop that emerged from the meta-right as such, the quote-unquote right to have rights, to use one of Hannah Arendt's formulations. She succinctly lays bare the expansion of the realm of rights. Only in a civilization in which the right to have rights has become an internalized disposition 
and an institution sustained by state agencies could the spiral of continually expanded juridification begin to develop. Something that has become quite typical of the European social dynamic in recent centuries. This expansion of the space in which rights are claimed admittedly casts an increasingly problematic shadow. A national and supranational regulatory law monster that is virtually unparalleled in history has been created by the reciprocal interaction of the limitless propagation of rights with gargantuan statist systems of self-reinforcement. Every mechanism that has been cited to this point has contributed to the temporal dimension's increasing prominence by challenging anticipatory intelligence to go ahead all the way to the end, not only for individual mortal existence, but for the entire ensemble of relations that we call, quote-unquote, modern society. <laughs>